today. So I want to bring up Christian, who's going to introduce our first keynote speaker. And we are really, really excited to have this gentleman with us. It's going to be a very different perspective about digital customer service, the overall experience from an industry that we can learn a lot from. So I'm excited to have him here. Christian, come on up, and we'll get it started. Thank you, Clark. Can you guys hear me OK? Let's go back. So uh, this morning, I'm opening up for Douglas Peel, who's going to come up and tell us a very, very nice story uh, that they have going on at the Ritz-Carlton. But before we do that, I want to take just a couple of minutes to speak to you all about just a different perspective, maybe, on how technology, healthcare, and the patient experience really is all coming together now for us. And when I did the slides, I wanted to think of this from a from the perspective of truly everything that we do today seems to be as a service, right? Do you go out and you buy it by the drip, by uh, by the you know single quantity, if you would? And why can healthcare not be this in the same fashion? So, I titled my slide "Healthcare," um, you know, your healthcare, our service. So, in regards to Building a patient experience, I feel strongly that it's important for us to do uh, a build from within where we build trust and organizational identity. If we don't do that, we tend to miss pieces along the way and we tend to fragment the actual solution that we produce and we put together forth for our patients. So if you see on the slide, the fine service levels, truly it speaks to ensuring that from start to finish throughout the entire process, if it's the individual that answers the phone when you call in to make a schedule, you know, schedule an appointment for a hospital or a clinic visit, or the, the nurse that checks you in, or the physician that actually takes care of you, all the way to the biller that may send you the bill, they all have to have that culture. You have to define the level of service. If you don't define them, you lose it along the way, and what happens is the patient goes through this roller coaster of emotions as they're going through their process, and they tend to have a different perspective on how their service went based on that point in time, instead of creating that continuum ecosystem throughout the entire process. And really, it's all about building from within. It's your people, process, and technology. If you invest in your individuals, you get them the right training, you get them the right attitude so they understand why they're doing what they're doing rather than just doing it. I think that's really important. Uh, a lot of process, because we're doing so much catch up in the industry nowadays, we're not actually spending a lot of time trying to understand why things are working the way they're working today before we try to fix them. And a lot of times it's not about introducing new process, it's simply fixing what's existing today and tweaking it just enough to create that continuum of service. And lastly, it's technology, um, which is frankly, as a CTO, I'll tell you, technology is the easiest part of what we do. The hardest part is actually trying to build a process around it and trying to get people to buy into it. And if we build the right technology, then if we build the first two, excuse me, then the technology will be easier for us to implement. Uh, predictable level of service really speaks to, do, do your patients know what they're getting? Do you as a customer know what you're getting when you first walk into a place of service? And it's important. Uh, from a clinical perspective, when it comes to patients, they should know the level of service that they're receiving. That is part of their experience. Uh, socially, we need to be connected more in a way where we don't give them just a bit of information and leave them you know, wanting more. We need them to be able to get the entire um, life cycle of what they're trying to accomplish from a healthcare perspective and, and truly capture that experience and have it at their disposal because they're truly you know, able to be in, in charge and in command of what's going on. And operationally, don't do this in a fragmented fashion, meaning don't do it on a certain line of service at a certain point in time, at a certain time of the year, and so on, truly try to adapt this whole process. And then standardization is key for everything. Uh, we can really have a ton of different uh, services that we offer. But if we don't have that identity, which speaks to the slide, the, the title of the slide, then you're not able to produce that continuum standard service offering that your patients and your, your consumers, if you would, are really trying to be able to take advantage of and leverage correctly. Otherwise, you tend to have really good areas and areas not so well, and then we tend to come into, once again, that roller coaster of uh, service levels that, that takes place. And then increase the confidence. I think uh, when Douglas will speak to us here in just a couple minutes, there, there's, an, there's an identity to the Ritz-Carlton. Why can't there be an identity to the healthcare environment that you're representing or you're serving in? 
Why can't it be for the organization that supports the healthcare environment that you're potentially selling your services to? The truth is, once you embody your identity, you tend to build everything around it versus trying to make everything around it build into the identity, which tend to have a lot of problems because you look at it from an outside in versus inside out. And I think that's a really important piece that we have to cover. I only have about 750 slides, so just bear with me for just a minute. The, um, the, the truth is, from a technology standpoint, the technology is here, and in most cases, the patient, since we're focusing on, on the patient aspect of it and the patient experience, is well ahead of just about every organization that exists out there. The, the problem is they consume the technology in a fragmented fashion as well because there isn't a well, full-on developed ecosystem yet that has been built to the point where everybody really injects into it in a very simple fashion. So on this slide, I truly did mean it. You know, I have an Apple Watch on my, on my wrist. I'm sure many of you may have a different type of smart device, your phone, whatnot. The fact that I can see my healthcare records now faster than the doctor can because I got a blood test and the results popped up in my health app, uh, we need to be ready. And, and this slide truly speaks to, it's driving the consumer is in the driver's seat. The patient is in the driver's seat, which is something that ha wasn't the case beforehand. So back to the trusted comments from earlier, really it has to do with, if you're gonna enable these types of services to your patients, you need to enable them in a way that your workflow has changed to accommodate these, you know, these new services that you're offering. Your folks have been trained and asked to you know, m modify their workflow to actually be able to provide that service at a level where it doesn't create more questions for the patient. And that's how I, how I feel you, know, you build the trust with everybody that you're serving. So the patient is ready, are we? I think that's a question that we probably will ask for the next couple of years before the environment changes enough for us to be in that capacity. Um, I, I was kidding about the 700 slides. So, Coming up after me, uh, Douglas Peel from the Ritz-Carlton. Douglas is going to tell us a very exciting story. I would say this, you have some cards on, on your table if you want to jot down some questions uh, that we can answer at a later time. Also, after this session, Doug will be uh, taking some questions during the break.